Folks! Folks! They got him coming. Calm down. You guys are impatient. You guys are impatient. Ah! Alright. How's everybody doing today? My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments, doing a little in, end of the month inventory. So you should be watching this video at the end of October of 2024. Just doing a count of out of print draft boxes. Just finished going through the Streets of Barry Manilow's New Capetta, Boulder's Gate. We've got all this clearance Pokemon, or Pokemon, oh my god, clearance Pokemon, that'll be the day. Uh, clearance Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm going to test, don't get too excited, but I'm going to test moving into the Yu-Gi-Oh! market after, because so many of you guys and patrons have been blowing me up for Yu-Gi-Oh! for years. Uh, we have a bunch of older, po uh, older Yu-Gi-Oh! and some newer Yu-Gi-Oh! and some rarity collections, and we're going to kind of do some tests on that coming up, but this is not a Yu-Gi-Oh! video. This is an interesting conversation about new magic versus old magic. That is the whole conversation today. Obviously, I am surrounded by new magic. The things that Rudy dumps, right? And pumps, and that's what I'm supposed to do. So what you're seeing here is the long-term Rudy position storage. That's what you're seeing in this video. Streets, Boulder's Gate, Kamigawa, Stepmom, March the Machine, Phyrexia, Brothers War, oh god, Wildsville Drain, Ixalan, Crimson, you get the idea. Um, I've been so intrigued with the direction of everything right now. And that's what I want to talk to you guys. I'm going to spill my rambles to you all. Sit back, relax, sort some cards. Hopefully you guys watch this on Halloween. It is the end of October. We're moving things around because, again, November 1st, um, I'm going to have the all my Dustmore and Play boxes and everything for 116 shipped for the next year. So you guys can get a case every month if you want. I don't really care. And no, it doesn't. No hidden fees. I don't know why everyone thinks, Rudy, I heard you sell for 116 But then when people try to buy from you, you add like uh, all these extra hidden costs, so it's actually like 150 a box. I said yes, because you listen to the internet instead of the actual videos or the person selling it to you. So, that is what's coming. So, finish inventory going through all this, and I am just so fascinated. Like, everyone's upset because we got the secret layer, Universes Beyond is taken over. SpongeBob Triangle Pants is going to be, you know, it's silly. I'm going to swing with my SpongeBob. Block with my Transformer, I'm going to bring out the Walking Dead, and then My Little Pony is I'm going to ride off in the sunset like Zelda. It, it's, I know, I know. But I'm doing the best I can to take off my personal opinion in Old Man Rudy hat of nostalgia and lore and what magic should be. And I'm doing the best I can to try to look at this like younger people are, what corporate's looking at, and what's going on. Let's look at the data besides how bitter Rudy is in the direction of magic. The data shows that universes beyond works. The internet is very vocal, very angry, very agitated about this universes beyond expansion where half the sets are UB sets and now they're all legal to play and everything. I, I know, I know. But we have to disconnect all of our opinions and if we want to look at the raw data, first of all, every universe's Beyond set has been a home run. We have a 100% success rate. Everything from the beginning Warhammer all the way to the Fallout, to the Lord of the Rings, to the Doctor Who, to what was the newest? Oh, Assassin's Creed. Best buy of 2024, by the way, in my opinion. Just going to lay it out there. Rudy's top pick, Assassin's Creed collector boxes. I don't have any for sale, but... Under $300 a box, that is your best pick. That's the Rudy pick of the year, by the way. And all of these are doing really well. But when we look at the other side of the coin, look at Ravnica Remastered. Look at the actual Ixalan, minus the Jurassic Park. And, you know, look at Wildsville Drain. Look at the actual magic sets with loosely done lore. That's very loosely. And it's still very good. So... The counterpoint is we don't need Universes Beyond because this all the standard... I mean, Rudy said it himself, all the standard magic sets are doing very well. So why do we need that if literally even the worst Carl of Manor got out of foreclosure, repaid the mortgage payments, and even Carl of Manor is doing well now? You know, I mean, Dustmourne's a home run. Bloomborough's a home run. Thunder Junction's a home run. 
like Ixalan, like all the standard sets have done really well. And it's a very difficult... I had a patron message me that and say, Rudy, I understand that you don't like Universes Beyond, Spongebob, Crossover, Marvel, Spider-Man, all this stuff. I get it. I am a huge Final Fantasy fan. Sorry. I'm going to shell for Final Fantasy. But, you know, the standard sets are working, Rudy. You know, I understand that you, you agree with Universes Beyond, but you don't like it. But the standard sets are working, and they are. But I think they're working differently. I think Universes Beyond hits differently. The way they market, and the way existing versus... See, I think it's like this. Ixalons, Wilds, Bloomborough, Thunder Junction, Dustmourne. The people who are into magic really love that. Right? Then the other side of the coin, younger individuals, more Timmies, and of course new people who join magic. They like the idea of being lured in by another brand that they like. Now, the existing player base is, oh, it's selling out. It's a one big, you know, advertising poster. It's all shilling. It's all marketing. We're just licensing magic to everything that sucks. And there's truth to that. But at the other side of the coin, these crossovers are luring in. I mean, I still have. I, I, I Assassin's Creed, even Fallout, okay? I barely even sold any Fallout boxes, okay? And I had many patrons that were new that slipped in. Because, again, every time there's drama and everything, like right now we got the big Pokemon Surging Sparks coming up. But just because that's coming up, there's going to be drama. Patrons are going to tell me to fuck off. I'm going to lose accounts. And then new people are going to jump in and grab those accounts the same night. There's going to be what we call a small turnover. Every major release that has emotions tied to it and people who just get angry at the Tumbleweed guy, there's going to be turnover. So we're about to have Pokemon Surging Sparks. I expect more turnover. But I can tell you all, looking back at Assassin's Creed, Looking back at even Fallout, even Lord of the Rings last year, every one of those events, like, just, um, let me give you this cool, this is a good example. So, almost a year ago today, or about 11, 10, 11 months ago, I did the three-pack, Lord of the Rings holiday special, I don't know, Ixalan and Wildsville Drain or something, I did like a three-pack of collector boxes for like 630 bucks. Obviously today, it's worth almost $2,000. Obviously, you would have three extra money in a year, blah, blah, blah. But the kicker was less than 1% of the patrons bought it. And of that less than 1% that bought, I would say over half of those orders were patrons that were new within a couple months that were new to magic, that were brought into magic from Doctor Who or Lord of the Rings because they liked that particular brand and they decided to try out magic because they liked that crossover. So I understand why and how this whole universe is beyond expansion is happening. I'm still not really on board with it, but I understand it. And that's the difference between separating Timmy emotions, Rudy's opinion, and just raw business and data. Personally, I think we should just have like four standard sets a year. No, no, not four. Five standard sets a year. Every two months and two weeks, we have a new standard set. With a little supplemental set in between. Or, I'm sorry, a tent pole. A major tent pole. I don't know if that's some phallic cock joke from Doc, the CEO. I don't know what that is. But I, you know, personally, I just prefer that. I think we should just have five standard sets a year. And then, like, one major modern or reprint or a master or a horizon or a specialty set. And then some commander decks and a core set kind of thing. Like, I don't think there should be... 50% of all products should be non-magic IPs. But that's where we're at, and the market is slowly coming around. Every, every week, every month, we're going to have the typical very... See, this is where it gets confusing. Because if you look at your supercomputer in your pants... No, not your penis. No, I'm talking about your, your smartphone. God, you guys, what is wrong with my audience? If you look at the supercomputer in your pants, not tetherballs, that is always going to show you videos. Like, just as a test, I did another video a day or two ago. Look at this channel. Seriously, check it out. And I actually put, like, Timmy's are angry because Infinity and Brothers War hits all-time high. And it's the least viewed discussion video on this channel in the last couple months. Now, before that, I have some videos that are almost identical with literally a negative title of something collapsing and the views go 3, 4, 5x. Because that's the stupid shit that our society and TikTok and shorts and that's what we're wired to. So knowing all this and knowing what's going on, 
you know, I am still working on myself to understand and better kind of navigate this new era. Okay. I don't think everyone's on board yet, but this new era is where, let me, let me lay a couple facts out for you all. Okay. The new era is all new Pokemon Scarlet Violet booster boxes are going to be difficult to get and successful for the foreseeable future. Everyone's going to be angry. Oh, I miss the days of Rudy doing $95 and $99. Yeah, we all fucking do. I miss getting 3,000 boxes instead of half, and I miss everyone being pissed about it. I'd rather make three bucks a box, sell thousands, versus sell half that and just piss everyone off. Welcome to the new era. It will take three to six months and a couple more releases for the market to recalibrate to that. Being upset because the days of $100 or less booster box or Pokemon aren't here... And then you're just a fucking Timmy. You need to evolve. The market in the trend is your friend until the end. And the trend has shifted around the bend. And the trend's going to punch you in the face until you start readjusting your behavior. Now, new magic. All collector boxes. Buckle up, buttercups. Because the days of even Rudy selling 24 box master cases of collector boxes for 170s and 180s, 189, they're gone. They're over with. We have ended that era. Okay. The era of large printing and the overprinting and print to oblivion is over with, okay? All collector boxes are collectible. Yes, it's artificial scarcity. Yes, it's being manipulated. Yes, they're purposely doing all that. That's great, but that's what's happening. Personally, now that I'm getting the choice of living through the previous and now I'm living through this, I feel like there's less opportunity now. I feel like the market's more challenging, and I really... God, I didn't realize how good we had it with endless Wilds of Low Drain collectors and endless Ixalan collectors at release. And, and all, I look back at all this stuff of Phyrexia collectors, Brothers War collectors, Mark the Machine collectors. There was, you could just get them. If you had money, you could just buy it till your heart desires. And that's over. The era's over with, folks. And that's causing me to do a lot of internal shifting, causing me to figure out how to readjust this. And it's causing me to report to you all that. Again, whether you're buying from LGS, whether you're trying to pre-order months in advance, and of course, that's another conversation, or you're trying to just be a Rudy patron, the days of fast supply and fire sale prices are over everywhere. Okay? It is just not a thing anymore. This is a new cycle, as we talked about with the bear market cycle, the 2024 uptick cycle, and now we're going into 2025, and it's just going to be a straight bull market of new products. So bring it back now. To our original conversation. It fascinates me that we have thousand dollar Lord of the Ring boxes. Four five hundred dollar Phyrexias, Ravnicas, <coughs> Wilds of Eldrains, Ixalons. What, six, seven hundred dollar fallouts? And it's fascinating to me that we have 30 year old magic cards that have not adjusted for inflation, have not skyrocketed in price, and remain out of favor. That's very interesting to me, everybody. It's very, very fascinating. Because it makes me step back and say, okay, should the smart money and should Rudy start to reassess the situation? Okay. The problem is cycles last multiple years. And this new cycle of 2024 just started. We're not even a full year in. Okay. Technically going into Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Stepsister Tuesday is technically the one year anniversary of the bear market conclusion and the bull market starting. Q4 2023. And historically cycles last a couple years. Which obviously the first year of any market cycle, the most wealth is transferred and the most appreciation is usually done because that's when non-desirable items um, are so beaten down from two years of going down that a lot of accelerated returns are made. Um, I think we've seen that with the S&P 500. Uh, we've seen it with Bitcoin this year. We've seen it with real estate the last few years. We've seen a lot of things, right? But it's intriguing that we have pockets of the market that refuse to make an uptick. And getting a lot of feedback from you all and patrons and individuals and everything. It's fascinating when I read this because the consensus, even from you all, at least from the hundreds of messages I've read, is, yes, Rudy, 
old magic cards, old Pokemon cards, graded comic books from the past and the Silver Age, Bronze Age, Gold, all the you know, Rolexes, pinball machines, uh, let's see, Marvel, X-Men cards, comic cards. Oh God, I think everything, right? Essentially, every niche market has reset downwards so much. Most of them are trying to come back, but they're, they're very slow. Many are stagnant. Many are just kind of dragging through the dirt, trying to get traction. They're still just slipping. But the new product, which is being led by this the younger generation and the social media machine. And yes, folks, I'll say it, just like some other YouTubers have said, the rip and ship thing, the streaming, the whatnots, the Twitch, this whole... This new shift again is going to have more impacts on the market than I think we all understand yet. And, you know, a lot of you all have been messaging me saying, Rudy, don't underestimate the whole, you know, streamers doing this whole ripping packs and selling packs and shipping them online and doing the live streaming. And I think there's more truth to that in Pokemon than there is with Magic. But as Magic and the collector boxes and the rarer versions of Magic become more unique and special... I do think Magic is going to get jealous of what's happening with Pokemon, what's happening with these other IPs. I mean, like when you look at like a chase card in like Flesh and Blood, no, like notice lately Flesh and Blood, you have super high, like look at Misfail. You have like a three, four, five thousand dollar crazy beautiful gorgeous chase card, right? And you have these like Holy Grail hits. Well, Holy Grail, okay, Arthurian Legends. You have these Holy Grail hits that make it exciting, right? And serial cards, serialized cards kind of do that with magic. Pokemon just, I guess, doesn't even... It's, it's amazing how Pokemon hasn't even used any of their arsenal. Can you imagine, like, Pokemon serialized cards? Or Pokemon redemption cards? Or Pokemon anything? Or sign cards or signatures from artists? Can you imagine? Pokemon doesn't even need to do any of that! Pokemon doesn't have high-end, flashy collector boxes like magic or sports cards. And yet they, they they perform and do their thing. It's crazy. So, I don't know how long it's going to be for the old magic to become in flavor again. That's the in favor or in flavor? I think I said in flavor. It's out of taste. There you go. People just aren't into it, you know? And the younger generation... As much as you on the internet and all the negative machine on the internet, there are the negative news machine reporting on all this negative SpongeBob swings for three, defends with Nicole Bolas, counterattacks with Optimus Prime. This is what younger, newer players are attracted to. And most of us online are the squeaky wheel. We may get the attention and you may get the feel. That everything online, everyone's quitting magic. Every, I'm never buying magic again. Like, we can see all that. You can feel it online, right? But the thing is, that doesn't represent, what, 10, 15, 20 million people who play magic or have magic cards around the world? I, you know, how many people, I mean, it, it doesn't represent that. And that's the confusing part. When you look at like Pokemon tubers or Poke tubers, Rudy, you're a Poke tuber. Ah, I know your stepsister is too. That's why I like her. It, you know, they all say the same thing. It's all investing Scarlet Violet now, right? And it's like, bro, it's been two years of people ragging on Rudy for selling Scarlet Violet and hoarding it. It's been two years of people ragging on the end of the best Sword and Shield era ever, which I still think Sword and Shield is. You're going to see all the boxes are 500 to 1,000 plus. Just one laid out there. But I, it's fascinating. Because it doesn't represent the normal kitchen table people. The people all around the country and world that play Magic and don't give a shit. They don't care about all this drama. There are millions of people who play, or maybe not play Pokemon. Ah, they all collect it. Gotta catch them all. And, but the millions of Magic players. The mil, you know, like these people, like, look at a YouTube video. How many Magic the Gathering YouTube videos Every day are getting millions of views. They don't. Because it doesn't represent the consensus. It feels like it. Because we're all like... Ugh, ugh, you know, but it's not. The data is incredibly bullish and positive. And I'm sorry, but... With limited collector items... Moving into Marvel and moving into Final Fantasy... 
moving into this new Speed Racer Aether set. I mean, I'm sorry, but these things are going to do really well. People are already bashing on foundations. Mm. I was like, please, I'm probably going to have foundation boxes for 116 ships. Like because it's just a play box, right? I'm going to sell foundation collector boxes pretty soon. Probably a tight limit of like limit two, three, or four or something, but whatever. But you can people are going to complain. People are going to get angry. Oh, I can't get it. Rudy just sells out. My local store canceled. It's going to be the same shit. But I'm telling you all, it doesn't represent most of the market. The squeaky wheel online is what we're all hearing. And that's... It, it's, it's not accurate, folks. And it's very tricky. So I wanna, I'm going to bring it back to this question before we end today's video. And then I'll give you guys a couple hot tips for going into November here. I don't... Sorry the squeaky and the noise. We got a lot of wind. I mean, I can hear like the like the roof. Everything's squeaking in the background. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, I don't think. I think we could be in for one to three more years until we get some sort of spark for the old magic again. I remain in the same position that I don't think old magic is dead, but it's it's going to be out of favor for a while. And if you're anything like Rudy, you should understand items that are out of favor are the times that you should probably collect them. You always want to get that, that Rolex watch you wanted as a kid? Now is probably the time to go get a Rolex. Because the prices are down, what, 30, 40, 50, 60% from the highs of two years ago? If that's something you want to treat yourself, go for it. If you're looking for something rare, if you want to buy a graded comic book by CGC. CGC, best grading company for comic books, right? Comic books only, not for magic cards and TCGs are terrible. But for comic books, I mean, honestly, comic book prices, I mean, from the highs, are down 40 to 80% from some of the highs two years ago. Like, if you ever want to go back in some of these things, there's opportunity all over. If you love old magic cards because you're an old fogey like me, look at old magic right now. Look at Arabian Nights. Look at Antiquities. Go get yourself a tabby. Get yourself a workshop. Look at Rudy's Bazaars. Look all of these things are nowhere near the all-time highs. Get yourself some unlimited power. It's crazy that you can buy played, a MP, heavy play, light play, unlimited, like a fucking Mox Pearl for like two, $3,000 in 2024. Think about that. An unlimited 1993 piece of power for $2,500. And that's the cost of like two and a half Lord of the Ring boxes. Holiday special box. Like, that's wild, everybody. That's fucking wild. Like, look at like Commander Masters. Look at Double Masters. Like, a little box of four Commander Masters collector packs. $250, right? All time high. $250. You can get a revised dual land for the price of a Commander Masters. So, there are times you do have to step back and go, huh. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at, folks. So, thanks for watching. I just wanted to ramble about this. I just keep thinking, and I'm just like, here, somebody give me a meme of, like, Rudy, like, rubbing his face on, on cardboard. And I keep thinking about this stuff. And then I look at, like, ooh, can you guys see that? It doesn't seem very safe. And I'm, like, clearance things. I'm looking at things that are out of favor, and I'm just like, hmm. And you guys know I've always been a contrarian. The last two years, I'm over here yelling at you guys to buy stuff. Buy the S&P. I don't give a shit what you buy. Buy collector boxes. Buy anything, right? And obviously, you know, all the people that bash me are pretty quiet now. Shock face. And I hope some of you all listen because a lot of people did really well now. And I do think there's a lot of runway still. And I think moving into November, I think the Magic Foundations is going to be very successful. Um, I think patrons are going to be upset at me because I'm only going to be able to sell like foundation collector boxes and on, like under six boxes per patron. I can't even sell by the like big giant orders anymore because the supply is too tight. But and again, I'm going to have I got dust, dude. I got dust more in play boxes for 116 ship, and then I've got foundation play boxes for 116 ship probably. And this is all coming up here in November, which is uh, hopefully you guys watch this end of the month. That's coming up in the next few days. And when I look at everything. 
And then I look going into 2025 with the runway and the schedule and kind of what's in the works, you know, and I look at surging sparks and all this stuff. It's, it really feels like the card world we, we've, I, I, I sometimes wonder if it's just the two year downturn was so intense that it's going to make this uptick feel more intense than what it is because things were just wrong. They weren't priced correctly because I had some comments from you all about that. Rudy, the reason, because Rudy, because, you know, somebody said this to me the other day on my, um, what, what, what collector box? What are you talking about? Round Recovery Master. Okay, that's what it was. So I, I'm out in the video here. Because I ran two sales on Round Recovery Master collectors for like 219 229 original release, whatever it is. Um, and then I ran a second sale like 239 or something. And again, it sold like shit. Uh, that's how I got my heavy bags. But look at this, think about it. Round Recovery Master collectors pushing to go for the four or five hundred a box, right? Easily within the next 90 days. Um, the thing is, if Ravnica Remastered Collector Boxes came out at the correct price, and in my opinion, the correct price would have been $300 a box. And a year later, going from 350 to four, would only be like a 10, 20% increase, which is still above normal, but that's actually a more realistic price movement. So technically, these boxes that are moving up so much it's, it feels like a lot. Like, un I just did a video. Unfinity Collector Boxes. Fucking nobody watched it the last video. It's got, but whatever. Unfinity Collector Boxes. 230 240 Probably 250 with tax. Like, that's an all-time high. But the only reason that's an all-time high is because everything tanked in the crash. But in reality, these boxes came out at 180 We all sold them for, like, I don't know, 200 or 210 Like, technically, going to 230 240 250 is where they should have been all along. You see what I'm saying? So we're kind of recalibrating, but because of that, percentages always feel dramatic when you recalibrate after a crash. Anyways, whatever, I'm done talking today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, thanks for all the support, thanks for the views. Obviously, it's end of the month, which means I'm sure if you wanna be a Rudy supporter, I'm sure I'm gonna have slots from everybody trying to jump out of Patreon before the charge, and people are gonna try to jump. We're gonna have all the turmoil right now because it's billing time. Um, but yeah, we got a. Uh, we got a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh sales, One Piece sale, Surging Sparks, Lost Origins, Throwback and Scarlet Violet ETBs. We've got the new Foundations, uh, Play and Collectors, and we got some other things I don't want to surprise you with, but yeah. I do want to comment one last thing. I want to bring up Weiss real quick. Oh, ah, should I say it yet? All right, I'll say it, I'll say it, I'll say it. And we have an Arthurian Legends booster box sale coming up in November. Yeah, so if you want to get yourself uh, like three boxes of Ethereum Legends, or you want to get yourself like a, a case of six or a master case of 12, we're going to have some epic pricing. We're going to have some cool shit, man. So anyways, coming up next. Uh, but I just want to say about Weiss, too. I wasn't going to say about Ethereum Legends. I want to surprise people. I don't like people knowing in advance, because then they go, oh, well, shit. Um, but the Weiss, like all the recent Weiss sets have been doing so well. And I feel it gets no attention and no credit. Like, even some of the all, like, the regular booster boxes, not even the premium Weiss boxes that came out in the last 12 months. Oh, my God. Some of these things. Like, eh, I'm going to leave it alone. Thanks for watching. Penis. You guys have a beautiful day.